Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. I am Vincent Chan. Thanks for coming to the lecture. Today we are going to continue our learning on the high frequency response of MOSFET common source amplifier. High frequency response of common source amplifier. Part 2. Open circuit time constant method. Open circuit time constant method. So let's quickly review what we talked about before, which is the high frequency analysis methodology. High frequency analysis methodology. Starting with the common source amplifier on the bottom and high frequency equivalent circuit on the top where two capacitors are included, CGS and the CGD. So three ways to solve this, time constant method, open circuit time constant method, simple and straightforward. And Miller's theorem, theorem. And the last one is the transfer function derivation. So now this lecture, we're gonna focus on the first approach, which is the open circuit time constant method. So when you look at the spectrum of an amplifier, amplifier spectrum and focus on the high frequency band, and then those high frequency behavior is affected, is controlled by those internal capacitors. In this case, common source amplifier, which where CGS, gate to source capacitance, and the gate to drain capacitance are considered. So open circuit time constant, open circuit time constant. Let's quickly review the method. The first, in step one, you set the input signal to zero, and then step two, you leave two and three open, and then calculate R10, and one three open, and calculate R20. And one two open, and try to get the resistance seen by the last capacitance, C3, which is R30 are recorded. And then the next step, you get all the time constant. The final step, you just simply put the sum of all time constant into the denominator. And this will give you the answer for quick estimation for upper three de decibel frequency. So now this is the high frequency equivalent circuit. So first step, set the input signal to zero. So you simply short circuit the VI short circuit the VI. And step two, you find all the open circuit resistances. Open circuit resistances. So how many resistances you are going to find? Two, R10 and R20. So first, let's try to get R10. So R10 means what? You let C2 open, you open circuit the rest of the capacitance. And you grab the terminal of two terminal of the C1, which is in this case, CGS. So what do you see? What do you see? This is easy, right? The parallel combination between R and the R in. It's very easy. So R and the R in. Let's define this, just rename the parallel combination of these two as RT. So this is easy. The first time constant, you got it, C1, R10, CGS times RT. Easy, right? Okay. Then next, you open circuit C1 and grab the two terminal of C2, which is the, the green and the blue. Green terminal and the blue term terminal, and the look at the resistance between green and the blue, the R2O. 
So now the RT which let's try to clean up this circuit, all right? So the two is combined, merge as the RT. Let's merge the three parallel into the RD prime. RD prime is defined as the parallel of the three. So now what do you see? You see two resistance. So I'm slowing down. And then one voltage control current source. The G GM VGS. So what is the R2O? This, let's redraw the circuit. Let me repeat that. You see one blue capacitance, uh, resistance, and one green resistance, which is RT prime, and one voltage control current source. So what is R2O? Are you thinking, hmm, RT short? And RD prime. So RT plus RD prime. What about the voltage control current source? What about the voltage control current source? What about the transconductance? So how to consider the effect of the current source? into how to turn the effect of the current source into an effective resistance. So now I want you to stop, to pause for three minutes. Try to solve the effective resistance seen by CGD, which is the R2O. So just take a screenshot and get a piece of paper, try to solve this. I'll come back in three minutes. Can you get this? So by definition, the effective resistance, the input resistance is you, if you cannot get the answer, then at least you can do this, right? Let's connect a testing voltage generator and flowing out a current. Try to find the relationship between VT and I will give you the answer, all right? So you just simply write down the current flowing into the green, uh, blue node, which is I, equals the two current out. One is GM VGS, the other one is VT plus GM, uh, VGS minus, uh, divided by RD prime. The red current equals, the red current equals the orange plus the green curve, and try to solve the VT of I. Of course, you need to replace the VGS by VT and I. Then you will get this answer. I'm not going to belabor the detail. The derivation, actually, you just need one equation, and then replace the VGS by either I or VT. Then you can solve this. But this... Today, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to do, you know, let me ask you, looks familiar? Does this look familiar to you? Analysis by inspection. Of course, you can solve this by derivation, right? But, hello, textbook also teach you this, right? So I think what I can offer is something that, that you will find this subject more interesting, not boring. You know, for me, I... I think do this kind of stuff, uh, yes, but I can do this, but it's kind of, it's, you know, not, not interesting. It, it won't excite me. So this, let me teach you how, how, how to do this. 
When when I see this, I think about this. Okay, let me let me let me let me teach you. Uh, let, let me just quickly show you how how I can do this. Okay, so now I am I'm I'm looking at the circuit. Okay, I'm not looking at the answer. So I'm looking at the circuit. So I think about sure. I, I think about this. I think about hmm. Let's do this. I think about this. Mm. I do this. Right? Can you see? But I'm thinking about. Let, let me let me just oh, dissect what I process, how I process this. Let me show you. I'm thinking about this. The circuit is on the left, but I'm thinking about my brain. The picture I picture this in in my mind. I picture this in my mind, right? Do you think this is equivalent? No? Blue correspond to blue. Green correspond to green. What about this? This is the equivalent circuit of this, right? Of the one on the top. The equivalent circuit. And then you compare these two. You compare these two. The green All, all the cors corresponding relationship has been painted in certain color. Blue, the blue correspond to blue. R uh, green correspond to green. Probably you need to pause and think about this. It's the same, right? So I'm look at the left. Green parallel GMVGS, and then what? Then in series with blue. Same thing with here. Green parallel orange current source, and then series with RS. So on the right-hand side, the output resistance is the, re is the one that between blue and the green, the same thing here. So you were asked the resistance between blue and the green. And so you simply, you simply leverage Leverage the one that you are very familiar, you already very familiar with, which is the RO plus one plus mu RS, which is the resistance refraction rule. The source resistance came back to drain and multiplied by what? By one plus mu. What is mu? GM times RO. The product of transconductance and the output. The distance, you know, several process, and the GM R O GM is GM on the left, R O on the right correspond to R D prime on the left hand side. All right, so you can practice this. The reason I want to teach you this, solve this by inspection, because this gonna show up in other courses and other circuit. So it's worth for you to invest this time. And try to get this by inspection once for all. Time constant. Let's go back to the, go to the so the, it's what's still stuck in this, the, the, the step two. Because many students cannot move forward with, beyond this point is they got stuck by the R2O. R1, O is easy. But R2O, well, you can solve this by inspection. And then you get the tau 2, step 3. Then what? Then easy. Sum of all the time constant. Effective time constant equals the sum of the individual time constant. And the last one, inverse the sum. You simply put the effective time constant, the total time constant into 
the denominator. This will give you the answer. This is the major takeaway. Analysis by inspection. First one, the resistance seen by C1, the CGS, this is easy. But the tough part is the second. So what is second? Let's practice. Let's practice. RO, which is RD prime, the parallel of three, plus one plus mu. What is mu? GM times RD prime. And then RS, S, the source. The source means the source of mass, the source of mass fat. Source gate drain, the source, reflect to drain, multiply by one plus mu, this. And then for this, because I, we just gone through this. We just gone through this. Analysis by inspection to solve the R2. Oh, I know I, the way I teach, I kind of challenge you to go higher, right? I believe this kind of skill will help you stand out. All right. So, because I don't, I'm a teacher at heart, so I don't expect you to be mediocre. I expect you to become an excellent, an excellent engineer, an excellent IC designer. All right. So look forward to seeing you in the in the next lecture video. We are going to teach uh, the second approach, which is the Miller effect, the Miller theorem, to solve the high frequency response of MOSFET common source amplifier. Look forward to seeing you. Thanks for watching.